So my friends, I think you know by now that I'm honoured to be sponsored by GQ Legal Specialists. For all your legal needs in Aotearoa, New Zealand, consider GQ. Kia ora te how are you doing my dear ones? I hope you're really well today. So this theme overlaps with quite a few areas that will be meaningful for a few of you out there. And I know that based on talking to you guys in the comments, right? So we're obviously thinking about this theme of how do we figure out who we are? What is the, the mechanism behind that? Now, this is a vast, huge and complex subject, and I'm going to distill it down to some simple ideas and give you some examples. So you can start to kind of think about where you might fall on the spectrum and hopefully help you understand the kind of parenting that you received and that obviously would have shaped the person that you are. So recently we were thinking about gaslighting, weren't we? And I will link the video below. So check it out after you've watched this, go ahead and check that out. Cause if you like this content, then you will definitely like that video. If you missed it, go ahead and watch it. Okay. Related to that video that I hope you'll watch after this one, I actually referenced an article and now the article is worthy of a kind of trigger warning cause it deals with some really sad themes what was really beautiful about the story that is again linked and i will link it below okay so you can just go ahead and read it was that. an article i think in the guardian so, the thing that was really beautiful about that sad story was the example of, a, of what i would consider a really good enough mother and actually probably better than good enough quite excellent actually. it was incidental to the story but because the mother was narrating this experience that she had of her child's passing over. In her own words, she actually told a story of a very attentive parent. And that's the kind of parent that we would all hope to have. Now I've been doing my work as a psychotherapist for a number of years, worked with thousands of patients at this point from all different walks of life. One of the things I've come to understand about when things don't go so well in early life for an individual is that the person who's the caregiver actually doesn't have sufficient maturity for these very sophisticated and yet really simple, you know, one could say elegantly simple patterns of behaviour that lead to positive outcomes and actually allow an individual to grow. Because when we think about children, it, it all, you know, on the surface, it kind of seems quite easy, it's quite straightforward, doesn't it? We, we know that we should be kind and loving to a child in our care and feed them, clothe them, you know, what else, <laughs> right? And the truth is, yes, all those things are very important, crucially important, but there's actually a heck of a lot more that goes on that is intuitive for many millions, if not billions of people around the world. But for others, especially if the adult who becomes a parent actually has their own kind of unprocessed trauma and difficulties in their past, these things are not so intuitive and not so easy. And so then we have difficulty. I often use this example, and I'm not sure if I've shared it with you guys, but it's a it's a really interesting one in terms of understanding, you know, in a, again, quite a simplistic way where we may have been sitting on that spectrum of kind of good enough and gave you what you need really emotionally, physically, psychologically, spiritually, etc. And the other end where, you know, it just really, the person who, who kind of gave you that guidance and the person who you went to when you scuffed your knee really wasn't able to be present for you. And there's these pictures, there's actually several pictures, but there's two in particular, or two or maybe a few more in particular that speak to me on this. And they're actually of two very famous politicians. I'm not gonna name them. Some of you guys will know exactly what I'm talking about. On the one hand, there's this image, several images actually, of, of the one politician who, to my mind, these images speak of an incredibly natural parent, someone who I would wager was given lots of love and all of the basic tools they needed to develop and grow up when they were little. And hence, as a result, they kind of just kind of know what to do with a baby, with a child, with an infant. The photos of that politician with children are very striking in that there's an immediacy about them. Children draw us into their world. And if we are okay enough in ourselves, 
we can kind of let our hair down a bit. We don't sort of stay stiffly like a Victorian parent, hopefully, right? We were able to play, we're able to be soft, we're able to be responsive. These are the kinds of elements that are required that enable an individual who is a small person, a child, to actually figure out for themselves who they are, right? Because one of the things, for example, and it was evident in the pictures of the politician who seems to be this very natural parent, one of the things I saw was really beautiful mirroring, you know, this idea that, you know, when you, you know, when you're talking to someone and you, you're deeply engrossed in conversation, if you've ever had this experience, and you might find, if you catch yourself, that you're kind of sitting like they're sitting and you're really kind of attentive to what they're saying. You know, if they say, oh, I was heartbroken, you might also go, oh, that sounds so painful, right? This is, this is what we're talking about when we use this idea of mirroring. It was super evident in the pictures of the politician on the one hand with the babies. It was really clear that they had a, just a natural capacity for that. This suggests lots of other really important, crucial elements that again feed into what makes up a, a good enough parent that actually allows for that individual the child to grow. On the other hand, there was other images of another politician and the one that stays with me and that I actually, you know, refer to sometimes is an image of the politician. I think he's holding twins, some babies, They're both crying in his arms. And, you know, again, what's your intuition when you, you're probably a parent. I know many of us in the Soul Food Farno are parents or caregivers of some kind. We have contact with children, our own family members, right? So, you know, you, this, will, this will relate to a lot of you, I know What's that. your immediate reaction when you, you know, you have a crying child in front of you? I'm hoping, and I'm guessing for most of you, you kind of go, oh, what's wrong? You know, what, what's, what's happened? There's an interest, right? It's not, oh, for goodness sake, you can walk off or whatever. I mean, you know, but some of us, of course, had that experience. So, so this is, it varies. The politician, it? on the other hand, as I say, was holding these two babies. And what was fascinating was that the infants were crying. And the, this adult grown person was also pulling a face as if they were crying. And this is not mirroring, guys, okay? So just to be clear, that what I'm describing now is not what we think about when we think about that positive, helpful, generative mirroring. What I saw in that image, in that one image, was someone who was, it was almost like a caricature. There was an element of kind of making fun of these babies. I mean, obviously, again, none of this would have been conscious. I, I would wager on the part of the individual holding these children. But it was so striking and certainly held up against the other, you know, more kind of helpful image or images that I've referenced. It's super striking to me. The main thing about the second politician with the crying babies and pulling this face, kind of a gnarly face that, that doesn't allow for any receptivity and reciprocity, which is this crucial thing that, that even with very young infants, we hope to be able to to do something of that mirroring where we can actually um, allow them to see that we care, right? Allow the babies or the children in our care, especially when they're hurt and upset, that they know that their distress is important to us and, and not being made fun of in any way. So again, I am being super simplistic with this and I will leave you some resources below for the very few of you who maybe want to read around this and learn a little bit more and get an idea, as I say, of where maybe you sat in terms of that spectrum. Probably one of the most important things about this second image with the, with the politician and the two babies pulling the face, it spoke to a self-absorption that is really counter to what we need when we're little growing up that, that allows us to grow and develop and specifically for our brains to develop and for us to learn ultimately this very high you know human capacity for empathy what i saw in that image was that inability to be present to the distress of an infant rather it kind of became about them so if you were to look at this image that i'm describing to you your attention would probably be drawn to the adult and although it's just an image and we can say it, it's it's not that big of a deal i think there's something interesting about that because it speaks to 
the dynamic that's actually playing out in real time in that moment. And obviously it doesn't really matter in that moment. Thankfully, the, that politician holding those babies was not their parents. So we would hope that <laughs> you know their parents are a bit more attuned, right? But it's interesting because what I hear time and time again from my patients who have struggled with various areas of life and particularly that self-awareness. We can only really get kind of timely manner if we've had parents who are able to mirror and be attentive and to be sympathetic to our pain and to understand that they are no longer the centre of the universe, but the child is, right? So if we had that, then probably I'll never meet that person, right? But if not the theme of that kind of self-centeredness is often unintentional on the part of the caregiver, but nonetheless, it has these devastating impacts. So maybe you're not sure, you're not entirely sure, you know, which end of that spectrum you, you might have been on as a, as a young child, as an infant, and what your caregivers were like. For the, many of us, there's lots of good reasons why we might not know, right? There are a few kind of telltale signs around that to help you understand i think one is interesting in that you know sometimes people pleasing can actually be part of that indication right and these aren't hard and fast rules my dear ones it doesn't mean that if you struggle with people pleasing that you definitely had you know the more challenging experience it doesn't mean that but this is just something that i've seen clinically over many years in many different examples and cases another one would be difficulty with understanding and seeing you know patterns of abuse in relationships and it kind of stands to reason doesn't it we need to have a really solid good example and particularly our first example or examples of relationship are crucial in terms of how we can develop later and understand relationships a third indication that i've commonly seen is just a sense of emptiness a sense of not really being certain of what one likes, of one's preferences, very uncertain about how one feels about things. These can be some indications, sometimes in some cases, of, of some more challenging experiences relationally from that early age. So if we feel that we've had the, the more difficult experiences, what can we do? Well, there's a lot that you can do. So that's the great news. There's okay. a lot that you can do all by yourself. However, the deepest and most meaningful transformation around these themes, in my view, there isn't really a substitute for psychotherapy or counselling. However, it is possible to approximate some of the really key elements of psychotherapy in other ways what i would say is the most important element in that case say for example you think well i've got a priest who's really nice who i can talk to you know or i've got a doctor who you know actually cares about me as a person beyond just my ailments those would be some good examples because really the key thing is that trust and safety in order to explore what feels painful but of course, the parameters of those kinds of relationships often aren't quite sufficient because you need time, you need space, you need quiet, you need a lot of factors to come in to actually uh, enable you to kind of explore kind of and grapple with some of the, the, the things that are difficult. And if that even seems impossible, then certainly I always recommend journaling. Journaling can be so, so fruitful. And that just means like keeping a diary my dear one it doesn't really require any tech you can use your your computer or your ipad or whatever if you so prefer again it's super important that that you have security around that, that nobody is going to come and stumble upon your your innermost feelings on paper or on the screen right so that's that's the only kind of caveat i would add with that but journaling can be really helpful and for sure there are a plethora of books out there that will help you on this journey if that's what you really want to to do and if you're somebody who struggles with retroactive jealousy rj then certainly where this kind of intersects you can argue that at the root of it at the heart of the presentations of rj that certainly that i see you know is this deep insecurity right and invariably when we go back to have a have a peek at where things began 
is often the way that some of those seeds were sown very early on. So there is hope in that. And I will link below the resources that are hopefully accessible to you. For example, books and maybe a couple of links that you can have a read of information that will help and guide you onto the next step. And I really hope that for those of you who really, really do have that desire to understand yourself and to, to understand some of the themes that we've touched on today, that it will kind of set you on that path or reset you on that path. Because, you know, it's actually really difficult to do this kind of work alone. And yet, I very well know that for many people that is the reality. It's just a matter of taking it step by step, doing the best you can and being really kind to yourself along the way. And of course, for those who are able to make that commitment to themselves in terms of therapy, because it is a commitment, you know, in every single way, not just financially, but just in terms of the time and the patience with yourself that is required. I very well know that that's not possible for everyone, which is really why I make these videos, right? But for those of you who are, then certainly it's probably the most transformative gift that you can give yourself. And really in the realms of being life-changing. When you have that good enough fit with the person who you're seeing, whether that's a counselor or a therapist, certainly in our team, we've got amazing people. There would be someone for Subject you. Subject to availability, of course. So my friends, Thank you for watching. I really hope this one has been useful for you. Remember, I have added some links below. So read the description box below, okay? And there you will find hopefully some more useful resources to keep you on your path, keep you growing, keep you recovering if you're in the RJ Recovery community. And I really wish you every success with that. I look forward to reading your comments. So do leave a comment below. Remember to like and subscribe if you're new. You're really welcome if you're new. I'll see you in the next one, my dear one. Kia ora.